Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm in Extapa, Mexico, and I'm here with my good friend, Ron Chabot. Today we're here talking about properties in Mexico and how if you want to be able to buy a property in Mexico, whether that's a vacation property or something that you want to be able to rent out or live in yourself, uh, Ron's going to walk us through the process on how he was able to do that. Before we get into it with Ron, if you don't mind, just hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm. You can also subscribe to my channel and feel free to share this video with other people who might be interested in buying property down here in Mexico. Uh, with that, I want to say, Ron, thanks so much for being here, taking hey, some time pleasure. out of your busy day, <laughs> out of your relaxed schedule here. I did squeeze you in today, but no. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Let's start first, if, uh, if you can give everyone a little bit of an introduction on who you are and, and what you do or what you did when you were working. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll put in my little two cents when I can. And tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hey, my name's Ron Chabot, born in Arborfield, Saskatchewan, and moved to Alberta and in the 80s, started a business up. I was in the retail music business. Did that for 32 years. Finally, um, put a few, you know, a few uh, shackles together, and <laughs> decided uh, when we sold our business that we wanted to come down to Mexico. Here, we traveled here throughout the years on all-inclusive vacations. You know, a couple of weeks out of the year kind of thing. Uh, fell in love with Mexico, and uh, we always thought we'd like to buy a property down here eventually. And so that's kind of yeah. how we ended up here. Let's talk about the specifics on this deal because uh, as you mentioned, you were you came down here to vacation and, and then I'm assuming that's when you started looking at uh, you know property here as well. And why did you choose Extapa? What was the what was the draw for this location specifically? Well, what happened is we, had, we, we traveled with some friends and uh, he was kind of going through the brochures and he, uh, he's the one that actually picked the place. And we'd never been here, so we, you know, we'd been to all the other the other spots, you know, Manzanillo, Mazatlan, Cancun, uh, you know, Acapulco, all those places. So we thought, yeah, this would be nice. It was, we knew it was a smaller, kind of a smaller town and, you know, we're okay with that. So after you came here uh, or while you were visiting here, is that when you started looking at property? Yeah, you know, we'd, we'd, uh, we just uh, didn't have any transportation other than our legs. So <laughs> we did a lot of walking, but we, we've seen probably, oh, maybe eight or nine properties kind of thing you know the two weeks that we were here but we kept walking past this one it was built uh, it was probably three quarters empty or, or more um, but at least we knew that the thing was finished so were you looking with a, a realtor here or were you just kind of like walking around and oh, at, at first we just we were just walking around yeah it was and uh, did the they, like places had kind of sales centers here like were you walking into yeah. that or talking to people and you were just kind of well, sussing things out on your own or there, was, there yeah. wasn't somebody guiding you no. like you didn't have a realtor you were working they did have there. a sales team here we really kind of had our heart set on this like once we seen it and, and, you know everything else that we seen was just more traditional mexican and and we wanted something like a home away from our home so after you decided on on this complex what was the what was the next step there the need started looking at individual units or Where did got you interesting <laughs> 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 all right tell us more <laughs> so we looked at about we probably looked at I don't know, just about every unit in here, and there's 40, 40, or 44 of them, so we probably looked at 30 of them anyways. Yeah. And, and they're, they were all very similar. We had looked at some different units, and uh, when we were with these uh, realtors, uh, the, like they're, I guess the realtor down here is pretty much, in, you, you can be a realtor, I could be a realtor. Yeah, so I, I did a little bit of research prior to us talking today, and, and you don't need a real estate license no, here. No, it's not like uh, back home. Yeah, That's a anyone can say that they're a realtor yeah. essentially so these were people that were hired by the builder i'm guessing yes to then be the representatives to sell off the the individual units exactly but as it as it turned out there was there was two sets of sales teams here there was one that the bank uh, had and then there was the one that the builder had and i guess what had happened is the builder and the bank ended up kind of parting company because <laughs> the builder didn't sell all the units that he thought he was gonna ran out of money the bank was already in on both projects and so they decided that we'll finish it we'll take a certain amount of units you take your units that you have and then we'll just make sure we sell sell everything off and everybody can go their own way eventually what happened is the sales team for the bank ended up the bank decided hey we better do this together right because that's exactly what happened it was got confusing for everyone so then they got it down to one sales team and I think we were kind of in just kind of as that was all happening because because within probably the, the next time we came down, those guys were gone. The, I'm guessing they were still sort of representing well, of course, the builder yeah. more so yeah. because once that was uh, once that was complete, then they would exit, I guess, and go yeah. back to wherever they were from. Yeah. And that, that was very confusing for us, you know, and we're like all of a sudden you start getting a little bit leery. Well, what's going on here? Right. Because mm. 
It was never really kind of explained to us that way. Was there a difference in uh, in bank owned units versus the ones? Price wise, um, here was the thing. Some of the units had air conditioners, let's say, in them. The builder had kind of cut every corner. So what he did is, you know, there'd be just like wire sticking out of the, out of the receptacles, right? Like there was no light switches, there was no air conditioning. So, so the price was less, but you know, it, was it was reflective of those things. Exactly. But then you had to come in and kind of finish the unit. That's right. I think of now seven years later and I look at some of the properties and, and I mean, you can buy a property totally done, furnished everything. Right. There's not too many buildings, I think, that are like this that I've seen down here. So I think we were just in on something that was kind of unique. Yeah, a unique situation. But also probably a beneficial situation in terms of price point. Yes, yeah. Because sure. when it's finished, when it's furnished, well, when it's you're paying for all that, yeah. right? which which you do, you know, when you start with something that is bare bones, but you can save money by shopping around and and, and fixturing it. Right. Whereas if we get the guy down here to do it, I think there's a little propina they call it tacked on. <laughs> What's that? What's propina? <laughs> a little tip here oh, and there. <laughs> there you go, yeah. That was an opportunity, really, yeah. for you to be able to pick it up at a slight, mm -hmm. uh, at a, yeah. at a may a slight or or maybe large discount of what something else would be in comparison and then add your personal touch yeah. to it, which you wanted to do anyway. So, I mean, that, that would have reflected somewhat of the price, like you said. So you decide on the one you ended up buying, the yep. one we're sitting in right now. And uh, what, what's then the process once you decide, okay, this is the unit that we wanted to buy? Then we had to uh, agree on the price. So we put in a, an offer to purchase it. Uh, we did that back in Canada, because by this time we'd gone we back left, home. Yeah. It was just a sheet of paper that said, this, this property, here's the price in USD, and that was it. Is that what currency you were dealing in, was well, the US what, dollars? That's what they asked for. What's the timeline on, on them accepting, like, all, is it relatively just quick? No, no, it was just, yeah, okay. But when you submitted the offer, like, did they get back to you within 24 hours, oh, yeah, 48 hours, yeah, or was it like, like within quick? A, yeah, within a day we had her hashed okay. out. So once you had an accepted offer, then you had to come down to Mexico yeah. again to... Did you have to? Could you have done it? No, we had, we had to, yeah, we we had had to, to be, be here. here. Yeah. It was a little bit tough because it's all in Spanish. So, right. you know, we got it translated and we ended up... Our administrator here now, Francisco, Oh, Mr. Francisco, that's fun to say. Francisco. He really helped us along. So he was working then for kind of the builder in the bank as well? Yeah, he was the administrator here. And so and he was local, yeah. lives here, yeah. does all that. And then they had the sales team, which were Canadians, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Canadians. So the three of them were kind of working, working together. Yeah. They were doing the sales elements, is that what yeah. they were doing? And then he was kind of helping with translation and administration and, and the, dealing the with the notary. local authorities and the, and, the notary. and the notary. Before you go on, can you buy a property here? How did you buy the property? In your personal name or how does it... Does you, it? Well, you can go personal or you can form a Mexican corporation. From what I read today too, there's a restricted area for, for foreigners. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying within the restricted area, which I think is... 100 miles of the border and 50 miles of the coast, then you can't buy in your personal name. You have to buy in a trust. Yes. And is that what you guys did? Yes, Obviously. that's what we did. Essentially, the bank then acts on your behalf. They purchase the property in a trust and you're the beneficiary of that trust and you are the only person that can has sole access to this property, but essentially the bank is acting on your behalf. Is yeah. that, is that yes. how it works? And we can pass it down to our children. You sure you don't want to pass it to, to me? Hey, I mean... <laughs> We're close, but not yeah, that that <laughs> <laughs> So it's a hundred year lease. Yeah. The bank is acting on your behalf, owning the property per se. They lease it back to you for 99 years. You can pass it to anybody. anybody yeah. The increase in value that you get to benefit from yes. that essentially, not the bank. And how does the notary work? They're acting on your behalf and yeah. on the bank's behalf, or you got a notary that's operating separately, or do you, do you know? No, I think we, we use the same notary, and the fees are somewhere in the, I think it was two to 3% of the value. So it's not so a flat rate fee here? No. It's based on the purchase price of the property yes. you're purchasing is what your legal fee is essentially yes. gonna be. Yeah. So what was the purchase price, if, if I can ask? Uh, this one, we, uh, we bought it for, by the time we were done with everything, it was, uh, I mean, furnished, the whole thing was about 186,000 Canadian. 186,000, 150 meters from the beach, two bedroom, two bathroom, about 1,100 square feet, furnished, everything done, it's, moving yeah. ready. Well, that, well, here they count your balcony and everything else, so it's about 1,800 oh. square feet. So after the notary signs all the documents, then 
essentially you have access to the property at yes. that point? Yes, yeah. And I mean, as far as getting the documentation that you or the your owner, it took us probably a year. A year? Why is that? Everything, What's the everything has to be funneled through Mexico City. So, I mean, you got yeah. all the Mexico, you know, all the paperwork goes to Mexico City. So they're, they're backlogged and it's just... And I mean, you know, for us it was, hey, we got access, we could, we could you know, do what we want to it. We bought all our furniture, everything moved in and... Hey, after a while, I just went. Hey, I don't. You know, I'll get it when I get it. But there's a major financial institution operating, like, you know, essentially yes. acting as the trust. So you, there's yeah, a certain amount of security yeah, there for sure. But people get a little nervous, right? Because when it doesn't. This happen, is different than what we deal with exactly. at home, right? So how long did it take them to get the whole building sold? Do you think? Another four years, five years. And so you did you have to pay condo fees? You pay condo yes, fees here. Yeah. Yeah, maintenance fees are, it runs, you know, the maintenance fees were, were 40, 4,000 pesos, which is 300, 280, I don't know, whatever that works out to. What would you say all in your expenses are here on a monthly basis? So, well, totally, you know, our, we're probably looking at about 550 bucks a Canadian. A month. A month. Yeah. You can't mortgage here, can you either? No, no. You can, but it's not really, most people don't do it because the interest rates are too high. I, I don't think you can mortgage as a foreigner. So you bought it all in cash, essentially, yeah. at that point, right? So you don't really have any other expenses on it beyond your your 550 yeah. bucks a month. But now everything in here, you said minus one unit one is unit, pretty yeah. much everything yeah. sold. Yeah. You own a couple in here now. You guys come down here s five months of the year? Is yeah. That what you? yeah, four to five months, yeah, yeah, depending on our situation. But you know, this year it's five months, yeah. What's the going rental rate of a, of a unit probably similar to yours in this, in this well, complex? Some of the owners here that are renting are getting 32 to 3500 a month. So if you're getting 35 fine. averaging out to about what 1700 a yeah. month throughout the whole year, 1700 a month at a purchase price of 186 is pretty close to what we call the 1% rule, so that's that's going to cash flow well. I mean even if you had a mortgage it's going to cash yeah. flow. Obviously you don't have a mortgage. But even at that, 1700 a month, that's about 20 grand a year collecting in revenue. 20,000 a year at $186,000 investment, that's about a 11 or 12% return on an annual basis and takes you about eight years to pay that off completely. It's a solid investment here. And you guys are using yours. Yes. We, so you don't have the benefit of renting it out. But the nice thing to know is if you weren't here, you could still rent it and it yeah. would be a, a great property. And what's the value uh, of, is there stuff that's sold in here similar to what yeah. yours is, is right now? Yeah, uh, some, there's been some units sell for 4.3 million pesos. Pesos, which is about 360? Something like that, 350. 360,000 yeah. Canadian dollars. So you've essentially doubled your money in, in seven years yep. on the value and you guys come down here and enjoy it. Every and if you rent it out, I mean, there's, there's and, and it cash flows yeah. if, you rev yeah. if you rent it out. I think it's really interesting just the, the differences in, in the system here versus the system at home. And I think there's, but there's still a, a, a tremendous opportunity to either take advantage of coming down here and buying a place and spending your winters here or, you know, buying something down here and using it as a rental property. Because yeah. it looks like it works both ways, depending yeah. on, you know, if you're buying the right place at the right time. Well, thanks so much hey, again yeah. for taking the time. My pleasure. If you liked what Ron had to say and are interested in investing in uh, properties down here, if you can go ahead and hit that like button. You can also subscribe to my channel and please feel free to uh, leave comments, questions below for me. I will definitely answer those questions. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for tuning in. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey and I look forward to hearing about your success stories very soon. Thanks so much everybody and have a great day. Hasta luego. <laughs>